uh, we have assembled after this break away sessions there were seven break away sessions could i now request uh, secretary school education and literacy for her introductory remarks for this session thank you vinit uh, respected uh, mos she uh, dr subhash sarkar sir uh, my colleague sanjay murthy and uh, my other colleagues from various ministries and from our ministry of education esteemed panelists experts and many other members who have joined us today um, so we have been there has been a lot of effort which has happened in the last 3 to 4 hours from 11:30 to 1:30 there were seven breakaway sessions sorry uh, i'm so sorry for this interruption uh, so after we completed the deliberations at 130 sir after that the moderators had a huge task before them uh, they actually had to collate and put together all the discussions that took place between 1130 to 130 into a simple and a lucid road map for us sir i would like to mention here uh, that two the moderators were who did all the from 130 to 330 in the case of the first parallel breakaway session sir the moderator was professor anil dattatre sastra bute chairman of aict uh, for the second one in which i was also present uh, professor ranjan bose from triple it delhi was there and sir he did a tremendous effort sir uh, in the third session uh, dr amrinder behra who is joint director of ciet he was there in the fourth session professor dr p s n rao director of spa he was there fifth session had uh, shri ved tiwari ceo of nsdc the sixth breakaway session had shri yogesh singh vc of delhi university and in the last one uh, we had shri biren khosh who is vice chairman of cii media hello kagal na yeah mm-hmm. so um all these moderators are sir ready with their way forward uh, what we are really looking forward to is a way forward with timelines with innovative interventions what are the kind of uh, activities we have to do uh, what are the <clears throat> uh, what are the specific areas in which you as experts can contribute uh, what has come out from the deliberation i was part of and i'm sure it has come out from the rest also was that digital education uh, can never be a replacement for particularly for school education perhaps for higher education uh, it could replace to some extent but not school education we quite agree with that but we also realize that digital education complements and supplements education and it has been the backbone of education during the pandemic time if we want to have resilience in our system in school education there is some amount
uh, I'll request the uh, moderator of the first uh, parallel breakaway session, Professor Anil Sahastrabuddhe, Chairman AICT, to present the report on, on the behalf of his uh, group. Thank you, Vinay Joshi ji, uh, Honorable Minister for Education, MOS, Dr. Rame Subhash Sarkar ji, Sri Rajiv Chandrasekhar, Honorable MOS, MSD, who will be also be with us, he will be also addressing us. Madam Anita Karwalji, Sri Sanjay Murthy ji, the Secretary of Higher Education, eminent panelists and experts who participated in all the seven parallel breakaway sessions, including my own session where there were eminent experts who were there. Let me share the screen and give you a brief outline about what all happened or transpired in the first one, which is about the digital university. Let me check whether it is visible. Is it visible? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. So this entire webinar on Budget 22, Education and Skills Sector, Making World-Class Higher Education Accessible for All, started from about 12 o'clock to more than 2.30. In fact, very long deliberations happened. And it took forward the suggestions from the Prime Minister's address in the morning, how digital university can empower our youth and in turn empower the nation, universalization of quality education, skill development, Use of animation, augmented reality, virtual reality, visual gaming, comics, etc. Internationalization, learning in mother tongue, and roadmap and timelines. So our group continued with this. And uh, the members of the group were listed here. So I'm not going to name all of them. They were all eminent experts, both from industry, from academia, who gave their very valuable inputs to us. Uh, secretary, in the beginning, Sri Sanjay Murthy ji laid foundation on what are we expecting? That means uh, the connectivity lays the foundation of a national digital university. And that's why how access has been continuously increasing. More than 10 million higher education students, they are all getting access. Addressed the need of quality faculty in remote rural tribal areas. Gross enrollment ratio of tribal students is low. So how can we use the digital university to reach out to them. GR for women also can be expanded. Implementation of academic bank of credits. We also talked about in the new education policy, multiple entry, multiple exit, multidisciplinary higher education institutions, how each one of them can practice through the digital university. Programs aligned to the industry needs. We talk about employability issues, designing the curriculum, which is ready mix of both in terms of uh, education and skilling, pedagogy of reskilling, lifelong learning, immersive and adaptive personalized learning using AR, VR, firm roadmap, modified regulations, which is the need of the hour, collaborative model for new generation teaching learning, and how we can make it happen. You know, this is what the pitch which uh, the Secretary of Higher Education raised in the beginning, and based on that, Several panelists and experts gave their thoughts, and I'm compiling all of that in the form of a short presentation. See, looking at the higher education landscape, this is a funnel from the school education to the higher education when we move ahead. We have 27% gross enrollment ratio as on date, and the new education policy talks about making it to 50%. So one of the possibilities is the digital university, this landscape of online education. And that's very important. There are certainly issues. There are issues like extreme competition for the top institutions. Seats are not available. How can we reach out to more numbers? There is no limit on the number of students who can take admission in a digital university. We saw a physical university where infrastructure limitations put on the number of students one can admit the high costs of education in the brick and mortar university. The low employability has to be taken care of and therefore the entire digital landscape has to be effectively used through reimagination of our bachelor's degrees, employment oriented, high quality and large scale. We have a modest beginning which we have 
to do access to higher quality education use of integration of technology we have to increase gr internationalization is also important and lifelong learning which is so important for our students when they get into jobs reskilling upskilling is also equally important and in the domain of digital education there is a grand opportunity which our country has in terms of becoming vishwa guru in virtual education we have experiences from some of the stakeholders who have been using digital means or access for digital education one of them is from the peramal foundation and the six important blocks give us insight into what is necessary number one multilingual this is very important accessible learning management education system whereby a student in a remote area in a particular language is not left out but while providing this digital education how even physical education is also important in terms of i said physical facilities coming to a institution and learning along with the peers in the especially in the school education is very important enabling adoption retention and completion of the courses this is also significantly important and how we can encourage students to be engaged in terms of immersive learning in terms of good learning experiences so that no one leaves the schooling system and continues and completes the education link peer learners to create strong learning communities you know this peer learning is important as well as improving the quality of instruction which is being given by our colleges and universities and schools so this is a very important issue of uh, not only accessibility when we talk about in terms of digital space but some of the children who cannot hear this small girl is saying that mai to pad sakti hu lekin meri behan jo sun nahi sakti hai uske liye kya upay hai so that means when we are talking about accessible education it is not merely multilingual but also how do we take care of students who are not having ability to do some kind of activity and that is where the importance of digital education comes in digital learning experiences very important all theoretical knowledge can be earned through the online but how experiential learning or labs can be provided maybe in every sector you know one class every fortnight can be complemented online learning module or leverage the capacity of the facility where it exists students from other institutions can be called in for making use of that these are all possible suggestions which were made and in terms of retention and completion of the courses very important thing is when we are doing education in an online or digital space time is not the limit you know you can do it at your own pace and that's very important and how we can make it too enabling you know not filling too many forms difficult ease of doing business we say in terms of ease of learning ease of doing education is also equally important and there are many facilitations which have already happened in terms of uh, e mitra there are several learning modules which have come in place we must effectively make use of uh, immersive learning experience we cannot say less about this this is very important the use of ar vr xr how artificial intelligence and machine learning can make personalized learning possible i think these are suggestions which have come in which are very very valuable while speaking on this are there challenges yes there are there are challenges of availability of internet stable connectivity at times devices existence of non availability sometime of the for the students online content delivery the attention span of students is short therefore what type of education content has to be delivered is also equally important the growth of the student is also to be observed through eye contact in a physical space whereas in digital space how can it be done these are challenges there are technology platforms there are technologies which can enable some of these things and therefore this also leads to several opportunities for our edutech startups tech savvy young generation is already there the society is aspirational therefore whether it is skilling or for higher education for entrepreneurship whether for demographic dividend 
we are all not only eyeing on our own country, but also can eye on the global market. And this is very, very fundamental as far as opportunity is concerned. So for doing all of this, we need a lot of, uh, you know, regulations which have to be changed. And uh, UGC has already come forward with several initiatives in the past, and more of them will come in the immediate future as an enabler and not as a watchdog and only for accountability it will look into otherwise reimagining the entire landscape of digital education will be covered students with diverse background cognitive capabilities whether it is socio-economic geographical disparity how it can be taken care of we already have academic bank of credit multiple exit entry the regulations for odl online are already modified there is no permission required for top ranking institutions to take approval of UGC. There is no cap on the number of seats. You know, this is a very fundamental important thing. Otherwise, many students cannot take admission in some of the good places because of the shortage of infrastructure there. But whereas in digital infrastructure, once created, you will be able to cater to large number of students. There is no upper cap, no job losses for teachers because many times teachers are worried about this. Technology enabled teaching learning will give more opportunities for them. You know, they must be prepared for that. And then finally, collaboration with edutech companies. These are all fundamentally possibilities. And we have already experienced some of this through in the form of SWAM platform, where more than 1,000 odd courses are conducted every semester. And a large number of students take this education free of cost. Some of them do write exams and they take certification and one of the examples of iit madras of running a bsc program in data science has 12000 students in one single year imagine an iit je examination where one can admit only 200 students here we are in a position to give high quality education to 12000 students so there are no barriers here in the form of uh, providing digital education here is the hub and spoke model, which many people talked about how hubs are created and many of the higher education institutions of excellent facilities can club together, come together and form a cluster and then hub and spoke model of providing digital education through a digital university is a possibility. We also have a, a possibility of involving many other partners, whether it is technology, platform providers, there are digital content creators, higher education institutions, there are virtual labs. We, we, can, we have several of them and many more can be added for getting experiential learning as well. And for continuous and comprehensive evaluation, we require platforms, proctored examinations. And in the process, we can have certificates, diplomas, degrees, can be awarded through the digital university. There is a role for educational companies, for the national testing agency, for educational companies and all of that. Some of these initiatives are already in place. How we bring them on the same platform? We are already talking about a structure called NDR and National Educational Technology Forum. All the initiatives of National Digital Library, NPTEL, Swayam, Swayam Prabha, e Partshala, Virtual Labs, NME, ICT, NEET or uh, internships, all of that can be put together to create a digital university space. Higher education universities can come together. There is some disturbance continuously happening. I think uh, all the people must switch off their uh, you know, microphone so that we will be able to hear coherently. Uh, digital university ecosystem, one of the ideas promoted by IIT Madras based on their NPTEL experience is all the IITs are already connected anyway, and how a digital university system can take care of not only giving foundational education, skills, specializations at undergraduate and postgraduate level. This is a possibility which uh, we can overcome access barriers for all learners with uh, the Swayam experience of conducting the education through local chapters. You know, when local chapters and local universities are onboarded, the reach is going to be much more comprehensive and this is what is realized through the experiment over there in the NPTEL. There were several suggestions which came from our industry experts as well as academicians, vice chancellors on the panel and the experts who intervened. 
about the need for academic leadership development. This is one of the priority areas because when we are moving digital, the normal pedagogical aspects are not, not enough. And that's why there is a requirement of academic leadership development. Change management in terms of our universities, vice chancellors or directors of the institutions, there is a change management required at that level, both in terms of pedagogy as well as in terms of attitude and we must provide what all opportunities are possible for our students who are the most important stakeholders of ours. Training on nuances on how to teach in an online mode and therefore a lot of sessions for teachers are important. Robust connectivity, access and uh, uh, for internet which is already happening, more of that has to happen and access to devices. This is also a very important touch point for all of us and uh, delivering a multimodal content. You know, quite often we all are gathering our information in the form of uh, the routine PowerPoint presentations or video, but how can it be dynamic? How can it be gamified? How can it be interactive? How can it be in multiple languages? Is all very important and supported by synchronous learning programs as well as asynchronous learning programs. And for this, we may need a Robust LMS, there are many LMS available. We can create many more of them which are useful to the particular need of the particular places. Uh, we have the data security issues, robust testing, learning assessment. There are also platforms for evaluation. We may make use of all of them in the digital university. Uh, most important part again and again repeatedly was talked about was faculty student interaction. How can it happen in a digital space? Uh, innovation and startups, you know, many startups can create some of the solutions for this. Quality digital content development, recognizing prior learning. Uh, this is very important from the point of view of students in the rural sector or in the remote areas, in tribal areas, in mountainous areas. Their prior learning also can be evaluated and credits given to them and then they can continue their learning beyond and then get the certification for degree or diplomas. Uh, conversion of uh, content into credits is what is required to be done by the digital university. Uh, increasing gross enrollment ratio, both in school and higher education. Hello. Uh, indigenous quality content creation by indigenous uh, our, uh, people who are helping us is also important. Sharing of resources in terms of laboratories and study centers. And as far as research is concerned, this was also an issue that even research where there is not hardcore equipment, which is high end equipment required, one can do it, especially theoretical research. And even where there is a experimental research, people can make use of the facilities and how it is not just the government, but how PPP mode of uh, we can create a system where online education can be created, where digital university plays a very important role. Important of uh, the law, the trade, the finance, the world is looking at this and so India can take a leadership position in all of this. Interdisciplinary collaborative research is already mentioned, innovative startups, synchronous digital learning, and five C's of uh, digital learning in terms of content, collaboration, completion, coaching, mentoring, and career outcomes. And uh, focus on time-bound action plan. You know, we have to have concurrent, comprehensive faculty training along with the starting of the digital university. These were very important suggestions which came in. And there are already several initiatives of the government in terms of uh, BharatNet to reach nook and corners of the country through the optical fiber connectivity. There are more than 8 billion users with mobile connectivity, which is quite robust today. And people can access education on their mobile phones to different types of devices. Uh, increased number of Swayam Swayam Prabha courses. The number of DTA channels are also being increased to 200. Each class, there will be one channel which is dedicated we already have National Digital Library, National Academic Depository, NEET, and Internship Portal. So all these initiatives are putting their efforts towards a digital university, a framework is to be created. I already referred earlier to National Digital Education Architecture 
NDR and setting up of National Education Technology Forum. Both are in place very soon. This will also help the digital university. Budget announcements in terms of uh, continuation of uh, the support that is given by the government in terms of budgetary support, 5G connections, designing for uh, more telecom equipment, CDOT given more facilities so that Bharat Net project is also taken forward to all the 6 lakh villages. I think the government is doing everything that is possible through the budgetary provision in terms of rural broadband through Bharat Net, PP scheme for even viability gap funding under process so what is required is being done now there are certain roles to be done by others as well so the states need to support rural students to acquire tablets and laptops digital libraries in each of the gram panchayats required there are already there in many places many more places are to be added and this is what bharat net for students looks like you know this is a pictorial view of how they are all getting connected, how public digital kiosk, how school education, the higher education, the ministries of social justice and empowerment can come together in this whole initiative. So we have all of this happening in a space where people are looking forward to regulations. The new education policy talked about regulations should be light but tight, must be flexible, a lot of autonomy to be given to the people. PPP mode of collaborations is important. All variety of support. Industry also should pitch in in terms of CSR support, mentoring support, the award of degrees and the equivalence. You know, this is also a very important phase because sometimes degrees which are awarded through distance education, online education are not treated same way as the regular degrees by the industry and therefore we must provide equivalence of this and the quality of content has been continuously upgraded and therefore the quality of students who come out of the online education are as good. In fact, uh, in many cases, it is found 69% uh, of the jobs are given to those who have achieved skills through such kind of platforms rather than the normal degree certificates. And therefore, one should not be worried about the degrees which are being given by the digital university. As far as the timelines are concerned, all the suggestions which have come in are being valued and accordingly a lot of work is there going to be done at the back end now, identifying the right kind of hub and spokes and if possible, if everything goes well, setting up of a digital university by August or at least within this one year must be feasible and possible and we should work towards that. And as far as gross enrollment ratio is concerned, we should reach the 50% level through the use of digital university in the next 10 years. This is the sum and substance of uh, what all transpired in the group one. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I now request Professor Ranjan Bose, Director of IIIT Delhi, to present the report by the second group. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joshi. Uh, I will be sharing my screen shortly. I hope my screen is visible. So a very good afternoon to all of you. I believe I have got about 20, 25 minutes to present the report and the findings. This is about the second breakout session. The title was the digital teacher uh, creating quality content, virtual lab for sir, 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 you have 15 minutes to present the report, sir. Okay, okay, so I will do accordingly. Uh, so let me quickly begin with uh, the um, uh, panelists. Can you move this slide? Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. So we had co-chairs, Secretary Baiti and Secretary School Education and Literacy. Um, and we started off with their initial comments, followed by panelists. And next slide. Uh, a set of experts uh, who basically commented on the specific questions posed to them. I will quickly go over the questions first. Next slide. So here is the summary of the questions that we discussed during the session. And then I will go over the clear recommendations which the experts gave. Of course, we didn't have too much time to collate, but here they are. So the first and the foremost thing that we talked about was content creation 
and effective delivery and ease of access of quality content. This is I, perhaps this was the most fundamental question that we posed to the uh, committee, followed by in the post pandemic era, what is the education learning loss? Here we're talking about the efficacy of education. And what is the loss in education learning because of the post COVID uh, era that we are seeing? And then how do we create resilience? How do we create institutional readiness for teacher preparedness for future such events? So this is trying to be a little bit of future ready. The next important question that we posed to the panelists was, how do we deal with the end-to-end -end requirement for the supply chain right from deep skilling, as Honorable PM mentioned today, right up to employability? And what kind of employability should we talk about? And how do we create the content which is matched to the students? Here we touched upon the domain of personalized education. The fourth question that we dealt with was better learning outcomes. And the connected problem is, what is the digital infrastructure required to do so? Please understand that the access problem is not just about digital infrastructure. Language itself is a barrier for access. Here are four more questions that we pose in the two hour span. There is a need to bridge the gap between deep skilling and deep learning. So we started on looking from the pedagogy and then took the discussion right up to andragogy, right? So from teaching to learn to learning to learn, that's a conceptual theoretical enabler that can be done by digital mode of uh, learning. Finally, we talked about efficacy of teaching learning from interpersonal perspective. This is rarely discussed. What is the role of the teacher and the student? The human interaction. What do peer-to-peer -peer learning? How do we learn from our friends? We know how the learning happens outside the classroom. What is the role of the parents in this open architecture? So we have a very good input on that front. As a case study, we took up virtual labs, which is also in our title, as a paradigm shift in student-centric education. What is the architecture, components, what is required for efficient delivery of virtual labs, not only for skilling, but also enhancement of knowledge. Finally, from the perspective of this budget announcement, we looked at uh, how to create quality content for these 200 new educational TV channels. So in the next five, seven minutes, I will go and explain what the key findings were. Um, clearly the 15 minutes allocated are not sufficient. We will be submitting a detailed report. The first question that we posed was the content creation and effective delivery. A lot of bullet points, I've only put some of them here, but the first important point came from motivating a teacher to create good content. Already there's a lot of content available. But how do we now identify the gap and then create camp content? But the aim is twofold. Aim is not only for the students, but also empowering the teachers, because that is where the multiplier effect will come. So that's how our discussion went. A lot of ideas were there, how to exactly empower the teachers to do a better job. And that comes right from motivating the teachers. Uh, we, of course, talked about the use of technology and connectivity to bridge the digital divide and improve the learning quality. Next slide. All right. The next question we posed uh, dealt with this COVID era learning loss. And here is the gray rhino black swan concept. While, while the pandemic was a black swan, the gray rhino refers to the problem that we know exists, but we have not been putting it off. And today, there is a combination. And this is the right time to respond. So a lot of deliberations went in terms of readiness for the next disruption. I mean, today, the education space is digital, distributed, diverse, disruptive, uh, data-centric, and of course, driven by mission. So this idea was about to handle and be ready for the next disruption. We can't say we didn't know. So digital teachers will enable us to do that. Next important point we talked about is not just skilling, but contextuality of skilling. Skilling has to be taken in the right context. This is very important. For example, what are the aspirational skills now? Is healthcare to be focused on? 
Should e-commerce deliver services be focused on? Should we focus on skilling in terms of green jobs? And so on and so forth. Next slide. Okay. The other thing that we talked about was end-to-end -end supply chain from skilling to employability. And here we broke the problem into smaller parts. It is not one wrong race. It, there is a 100 meter run, there is a middle distance running, and there is a marathon. So we need to have multiple strategies to address these three different kinds of needs. And one of the great ideas that came up was the creation of a unified digital uh, uh, it's not, it's very easy. A, a convergence platform where uh, we, have, the we have the possibility of teacher, students, content creation, assessment, gap analysis, and recommendations. And we don't have to do all of this. There are already AI ML based tools available which can make recommendations for more effective learning. So we did spend some time discussing how to use AI ML to augment the reach of digital teachers. Another suggestion was make our own devices, make it in India, and enable CSR funding to ensure that we can deliver these low cost devices to our students across the country. Uh, we also quickly talked about uh, the content creation in terms of customizable content and you know, create your own content. Next slide. Uh, this is a busy slide, but it deals on better learning outcomes. I will just run you through key points in this point. The basic premise is we need 21st century solutions for 21st century problems. We have to look at the problem solution from a different type. I mean, how to teach, right? How to address information asymmetry? How do we fund co-creation of content? And imagine a UPI-like concept, which digit, this, you know, transform the uh, banking sector. Do we have a UPI-like concept for education, universalization of democratization of education? Can we look at micro learning environment, bite sized contents, micro credentials, stackable credentials? These are on all implementation. And we can see them also being given in the NEP 2020. We also focus on curation versus creation. There's already a lot of content, good content available in India, globally, but we need to curate them. Curate them to create a world class content because world class education, as Honorable PM said, can only be achieved by world class content. Next slide, please. Then, uh, deep skilling and deep learning. The question is right now how to you know, encourage different colleges to be a part of this initiative. Can we take the story to the district level? Can we delegate? Uh, can we have now local languages being at, at the uh, skilling at the local languages at the district level, right? Can the curriculum be revised? There is, of course, this is the time to revise curriculum, and digital platform gives us a very easy way to update uh, and proliferate uh, curricula. So this is very very important. Another idea that came up was that. We have a Google Maps to navigate us through uh, space. You, we should have a similar concept to navigate us through this world of education where content is there, but the students can easily navigate through this so-called world of education and create their own program. So that is a very, very interesting uh, concept that would be discussed. Next slide. Uh, yet another point we talked about was the role of peer learning, parents, and the human bond, right? And, and we started off with language, and we realized that what roles the technology can play and what roles the technology cannot play. So this is very important for us to understand that while we, you know, raise our banner and say, look, everything is digital, digital teachers, virtual labs, everything is there, but please do not undermine the importance of human factors. And, and the question now is how to enable humans to better use the technology at hand. That is the basic uh, idea about this slide. How can technology enable, strengthen the teachers in an open classroom format? Next slide. Uh, virtual labs was discussed. Yeah, I'm, I'm the box,
and 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 we talked about what enablers AR and VR based applications skilling getting their hands dirty uh, standardization of architecture and mm -hmm. of course the need to I train teachers to effectively use words. virtual labs so that uh, students and teachers can use it together with the theory classes so it can be used by uh, itself and together with other learning and teaching tools uh, next slide finally we talked about how to leverage this wonderful resource the, that we have the educational tv channel of swam prabha as announced in the union budget again several things proper content should be there but it doesn't mean that we have to have long programs we can have short focused content being available so that this 8 to 10 minute capsules are transmitted over the tv channels and then students can have a feedback channel as to you know go back and interface with teachers and learn that is number one next thing is quality content for this swam prabha can be used can be created using teachers perhaps national award winning teachers because what do we want we want teachers who inspire who were our great teachers we have fond memories of teachers who can inspire so that is how we should get in excellent speakers teachers who can really create content that can be telecast so that's where we can start uh, this will also help us to do widespread digital inclusions right up to schools in the villages right up to the anganwadis that's where the reach is and this is how we should target right from content creation to the delivery of content uh, same uh, thing another concept that was discussed is parallel to the academic bank of um, credits it, there is an academic bank of learning here this is a touching upon personalized education can we monitor students in terms of how much they are learning all along the way and help them augment their skills figure out where they are talented nurture the talents and help them where they are lacking and analytics and advanced analytics can be built up on all of this so i believe i have taken up my 15 minutes uh, i have just given the tip of the iceberg the environment was electric in the panel discussion today i the, the recording is there and we will be submitting many many more points which i have not been able to do, do, do justice in this 15 minutes allocated to me i would be very happy to answer any questions i believe some of my panel members and experts are also in this meeting and I encourage them if they would like to add to anything that may, I may have left. Over to you, Dr. Josh. Thank you, Professor Bose. Uh, could I now request Dr. Amrendra Behra, Joint Director CIET, to present the report of the third group? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Honorable uh, Minister of Education, Government of India. Uh, Honorable Secretary, uh, Department of School Education and Literacy. And Honorable Secretary, Department of Higher Education. Uh, esteemed Chairperson of the Breakout Group 3, uh, which deliberated on widening reach of one class, one channel, and uh, particularly reaching quality digital education to hardest corner of the country was the theme for deliberation of this particular group. If I uh, take you through the details, we had a large group of uh, uh, people and distinguished uh, other uh, colleagues from different departments and ministries. So uh, the group had uh, the uh, deliberation under the chairpersonship of Professor Nageshwar Raoji, which he you know, uh, as the chairperson and we had Dr. T.P. Singh as a co-chair, uh, who is the Director General BISAC in under Ministry of Electronics and IT. We had around four, uh, five panelists who had a presentation, then nearly 15 uh, participants who actively participated along with the other 75 participants who also contributed uh, through various modes during the deliberation. This uh, deliberation was also uh, simultaneously taken through the PMEBIDYA uh, DTS TV channels for the users 
and also on the YouTube uh, official channel of NCERT uh, and uh, Geo TV mobile app. If I take you through the uh, action points particularly uh, and the broad uh, strategies for implementation, uh, the team has particularly identified broad action points and strategies for implementation. And uh, uh, these are the structures for implementation as far as the 200 expansion of 12 TV channels to 200 TV channels are concerned. NCRT uh, is the nodal uh, department to coordinate and uh, develop a, a standard operating procedure for uh, details for implementation, including the quality of content, uh, scheduling of the programs, uh, even the advocacy uh, for that, even dissemination of the different uh, uh, content for the stakeholders, including uh, uh, having a process and a standard procedure for generating QR codes and embedding into in, uh, the television programs to uh, particularly disseminate these programs as uh, coherent access through portals, apps, other than the telecast broadcast mode and including monthly meetings for streamlining the process that has been uh, thought up. And the BISA came uh, under Ministry of Electronics and IT uh, will coordinate with ISRO, a Department of Space for transponders, uh, where three more transponders are required to launch uh, 200 more channels. And BISA will also be procuring uh, required hardware and uh, software for launching uh, these uh, 200 channels. BISAC will also provide encoder to all the channel uh, coordinators to uh, have live telecast of programs, not only having recorded programs, even during examination time also, how uh, help can be uh, provided through live telecast. And uh, simultaneously, uh, BISAC will also coordinate with uh, other uh, stakeholders, especially for Geo TV app of these 200 channels will also be uh, simulcast on GOTV app as it is being uh, done now and through other partners, uh, including the cable operators and all. And Prasar Bharti under Ministry of Electronics and IT being the regulator uh, will be branding and co-branding these uh, 200 PME Vidya channels and it will be called as DD channels uh, and uh, DD Fridays uh, will carry all these channels. And they will also explore possibility for simulcast through private players. Uh, uh, to, since uh, uh, Ministry of IB is the regulator, Prasar Bharti is the regulator for uh, all broadcast purposes and to carry all these channels through DTH services and through cable network. And last not least, we will have channel coordinators from states, UTs, autonomous bodies under central government and uh, uh, state government. Uh, who will be responsible for developing uh, contents, curating those contents, making program schedules, and uh, uh, providing those contents for telecast uh, to BISAC as per the SOPs uh, designed uh, for, uh, for the purpose. And a monthly transmission schedule has to be developed and submitted to BISAC on a regular basis and uh, one to three months uh, in advance uh, is usually uh, done. And uh, if we talk about the uh, way forward further outlining and uh, the project aims at uh, uh, catering to uh, the needs of students, teachers, teacher educators, uh, and uh, a main goal is to provide content in Indian languages. All of us, we know that India is diverse linguistically and we have five distinct language families like Aryan, Dravidian, Austroasiatic, Tibota Verban and Andamanese. Nearly 1700 uh, languages are spoken and uh, uh, at oral oral level. And uh, content also, many of those languages are mother tongues in the uh, 15 lakh schools. So, uh, regional language content will be the key, and the states and other stakeholders, partners need to uh, develop that. And as far as the these 1200 channels are uh, concerned, it will be. Uh, launched. And uh, uh, th there was a discussion about the marginalized sections. Uh, so uh, they need to have access points and uh, opportunities 
and also their learning gaps need to be mitigated through this uh, television network. Creating co quality content and inter interactive content was the key. It was also discussed that virtual lab based videos and uh, uh, 3D to 7D uh, based videos uh, could be uh, developed and uh, uh, synchronized with the telecast and uh, uh, such videos needs to be embedded to give children lab experience as well, even in COVID, COVID pandemic uh, situation. And then creating quality uh, content and interactive content, not only for uh, the uh, so-called uh, normal children or general uh, audience, but for the, the bank, all uh, 21 group of uh, uh, particularly uh, people, those who have been categorized under the um, revised PWD Act 2016 need to be taken into consideration, including the visually uh, challenged and uh, hearing impaired and also uh, other uh, learners, including slow learners. And also resolving the infrastructure related issue, especially having this antenna, having a television uh, at uh, uh, different levels, including in schools and other community uh, centers to uh, reach out uh, to the last uh, child and the last mile. So that was the concern. Uh, again, uh, a, a new approach for creating content for vocational education and pre-vocational education not only uh, uh, for uh, secondary level, uh, secondary stage 1, 9, 10th, and 11, 12th secondary stage 2, but also pre-vocational, which is uh, at middle level. And also service sector uh, and different uh, job roles in the service sector needs to be covered. So there was a detailed discussion on how uh, it can meet out the uh, need of skill development as Honorable Prime Minister while talking about the scale and diversity in our country, talks about skill, scale, and speed together to be achieved using uh, technology, especially in case of uh, uh, television programs. If we talk about the stakeholders and uh, uh, their identification, so these are the stakeholders and uh, capacity building of the stakeholders and uh, regulatory requirement and the orientation on regulatory requirement, including curation process, since a large number of contents to be developed, already developed for contents to be curated uh, for telecast. So the constitutional value, scientific temper, and the core essentials uh, identified uh, as for the upcoming curriculum framework and the national education policy 2020 needs to be taken into consideration. And SCRTs, school boards, State Institute of Educational Technologies, uh, even the national level organizations like Andrew Vidyalaya Sangatan, uh, National Institute of Open Schooling, which is the, again, largest uh, institution working in the open schooling sector, including state open schooling uh, sector, uh, SIOS, um, and Navodaya Vidyalaya Samiti, CVSE, and other uh, school boards. So they have to be taken on board. And as far as the private agencies or uh, players are concerned, there was a lot of discussion on bringing to NGOs, corporates, startups, and entrepreneurs, including the community, uh, because a lot of skill courses we are uh, thinking, uh, and uh, the discussion was there to be developed uh, for skill development. So in that case, the skills already available in the community needs to be captured and made available uh, to the uh, students for their competency and skill development including uh, individuals, those who are interested uh, in developing content in various uh, Indian languages needs to be encouraged so that we get adequate number of content uh, for uh, telecast. Uh, and uh, also uh, the, there is a need for continuous capacity building of the state stakeholders and the NGO sector since a large number of contents to be developed, so that will be uh, that was also discussed, which could be taken into consideration. Uh, again, it was uh, thought of that a multilateral MOU uh, among the institutions needs to be signed, starting from uh, Ministry of IB Education uh, and the Ministry of Electronics and IT and other ministries uh, based on the uh, need, even the Skill Ministry to uh, take this initiative forward in a uh, flawless manner.
and uh, uh, if we talk about the uh, further linking the ongoing initiatives uh, with the new announcement it is uh, already uh, clear that uh, the 12 pme vidya dts tv channels which was um, uh, envisioned as part of the budget announcement uh, 2020 so it is being further carried uh, carried to expand this uh, 200 TV channel, which will be boon for the whole country uh, to spread uh, digital education, uh, particularly offline on air education, apart from the online uh, um, education, digital education. Then, textbook based programs uh, uh, also needs to uh, have been embedded into it, and the QR codes on the um, uh, books have been uh, also uh, printed. And these resources with the QR code will also be available and uh, are being made available uh, through QR codes. If a child uh, is also scanning the code given in the book, can also access these videos as uh, another part of the coherent access. Not only it is telecast, broadcast, and uh, uh, through portal and app, also through uh, text-based uh, QR code scans. Yeah, even the dedicated uh, dedicated slot for the uh, telecast of e-content for the bank, uh, especially in Indian Sign Language, has already been started for primary and uh, in the beginning of the upper primary. Uh, it will be expanded to other levels as well as for vocational, adult education, uh, and also preschool uh, education. A regular feedback mechanism through interactive voice response system and emails. So uh, have also been planned and it was also discussed to take it uh, forward. Even overall coordination among various agencies are key. So uh, we uh, also had discussion that the state and other national coordinators uh, need to have regular coordination and continue the coordination which uh, we are having for the 12 uh, TV channels. Uh, if we link this to the next point as identifying areas of employment generation, and aligning it uh, with the skill development, definitely since 200 uh, channels will be there, so it is equivalent to feeding 200 monsters or elephants, uh, these contents. So that is why a large number of script writers, camera person, uh, photographers, graphic artists, animation artists, video editors uh, will be required uh, who uh, will be supporting these 200 channels to run successfully the digital content. Even a large number of technical staff like sound recordists and uh, also uh, recording um, uh, experts to manage the studio uh, production, pre-production, uh, production and post-production uh, will be required, including uh, the web portal and mobile app maintaining because these resources will be simultaneously available on Diksha and uh, uh, Swayam portal. Uh, for the different stakeholders as coherent access from portal uh, to app to broadcast and non-broadcast uh, mode. And if we talk about the academics, again, script writing and storyboarding are also key and conducting research, particularly the policy NEP 2020 talks about while talking about use and integration of technology, talks about taking up small pilots and then expanding that to impact studies and uh, effectiveness studies and also large scale surveys to uh, know that how far these are being used and what else uh, required. And uh, not only that, uh, a large number of human resource will be re required for transcription, translation, uh, subtitling and uh, transliteration uh, also. So a large number of human resource across the country, uh, which will be developed can also help uh, not only in India for running these channels, but there will be human resource for the whole world for supporting digital education across the globe. Uh, since India believes in Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam as our uh, main uh, goal. So if I take you through the uh, next uh, slide, it is uh, setting board broad timelines. So we have also uh, uh, had a detailed discussion with the BISAC and other uh, institutions and uh, presenters during the process. So uh, it has already been uh, mentioned that we will start from approval process, which may happen in February, March. And uh, then the procurement of satellite bandwidth and transponder could happen uh, starting from March. And identification and procurement of equipments could happen in April. 
installation and integration testing commissioning by bisac in uh, during by may and uh, um, 2022 and the creation of standard operating procedures and all uh, with um, the different co coordinating agencies for the different coordinating agencies by march uh, 2022 infrastructural setup for coordinating agency by april even orientation meeting with the coordinating agencies um, uh, to start by march development of e content for telecast by coordinating agency and uh, uh, states UTs that is an ongoing process will be continuing that also since we are doing for uh, 12 channels it will be continued for 200 uh, channels review of uh, development developed content already on regular basis will be key for feeding these channels so CIT, NCRT, states, UTs, autonomous bodies uh, have to continue this process since it is uh, an ongoing process now also happening and the wide continuous long term publicity is the key so we need to develop materials and through multi pronged strategies uh, through social media television radio print uh, we need to uh, take up this uh, on a regular basis and on time bound manner and the uh, there is a, a discussion and a plan that by july 200 uh, new dts tv channels in multiple indian languages uh, to be launched if I take you through the uh, next uh, uh, slide, uh, there are some uh, other points. The, the, this is the um, last slide. Infrastructure aspects are very uh, crucial. So this was also discussed and uh, workability of uh, any structure and coordination mechanism uh, being uh, evolved is also uh, key and uh, also uh, to uh, make these channels available uh, to every stakeholders. It is not that only it will be telecast under Prime Minister's e Vidya uh, 200 channels, but it will also be simulcast through other platforms. And there was a suggestion that OTT platform uh, should uh, also be introduced to uh, make these channels available. And uh, um, require amount maybe um, uh, particularly uh, to feed uh, these 12 channels, uh, 200 channels needs to be uh, thought of also. And also quality content uh, is very key and uh, keeping in view the heterogeneous group of learners starting from nursery to tertiary and teacher education uh, because teacher around 85 lakh teachers are there alone in the school education sector. They are continuous training. So uh, we uh, need to uh, have a quality content for the stakeholders and also keep in view the attention span. There was a discussion that if it is a content meant for nursery kids, so maybe more engaging content, interactive contents are required rather than lecture based content. So uh, that is why and involvement of best teachers across the country needs to be identified and uh, uh, need to be used for recording of these contents. Even as far as the translation, transcription and uh, uh, transliteration is concerned uh, in regional languages, AI supported platforms need to be done. We had one expert from uh, Indian Institute of Management, uh, IIM Ahmedabad. So there, uh, there was a discussion that how machine supported uh, this process can be done so that the child will have an opportunity to uh, access remote and through remote can change the language and uh, see the content and use the content. Even content for uh, the bank uh, is the key. Not only that the 21 variety of disability listed as for the revised PWD Act, but also for the gifted children, uh, those who need to be nurtured through these e-contents and uh, uh, they need to get an opportunity. Even channel to uh, include contents for pre-vocational, vocational education for holistic development was also discussed. And the inclusion of content on psychosocial aspect of the learner, because nowadays with COVID pandemic situation also, otherwise also due to uh, so much uh, different conditions since children are hit from the heterogeneous groups. So psychosocial services needs to be taken forward using TV uh, channels. and. Uh, since um, research for uh, finding learners needs is, will be the key for 
content development so continuous media research is required uh, through various agencies to know the learning needs of children and accordingly instructional design and scripting storyboarding needs to be developed for the content creation and uh, the focus uh, on service sector i have already mentioned that employability and key generation is the key because india has a, a demographic dividend of having more number of youth in our country two third of our population are youth so skill development is the key Bahera, dr behra i would request yeah. you to uh, please wind up because uh, there are other thank speakers you, after you thank you sir this is the last slide uh, thank you and we uh, also the committee uh, um, uh, discussed the members discussed about the having a robust monitoring process and also having a large scale advocacy to reach out thank you very much for your patient hearing so over to sri vinay ji uh, thank you dr behra could i now request professor psn rao director spa delhi to present the report of the fourth group okay thank you um, respected uh, secretaries dignitaries and other colleagues uh, I am uh, going to summarize about the breakout session four. Uh, this is related to India-specific knowledge in urban planning and design. Uh, I'll just share my presentation. Here we are. I I hope uh, I am audible and I hope the presentation is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. So well, uh, this um, uh, session was uh, chaired by. Uh, Mr. Manoj uh, Joshi ji, who is the secretary of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, uh, we had five speakers and we had lists, and it was of uh, practitioners as well as academicians, and uh, various emerging issues related to urban planning education because this is an area. Sir, sir your slide is, is not moving. Actually, now it has moved. Yes, thank you. It has moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is an area where uh, it is important for us to look at education from a very practical standpoint of view, because the education that is being imparted or that should be imparted in the in the colleges and the capacity enhancements that are needed, they have to actually go onto the ground to make life much better and to make our cities better places to live in. So in that context, we we uh, had a blend of practitioners and academicians looking at uh, urban planning in the country in the light of the uh, budget uh, uh, provisions uh, that have been made. And uh, th the first thing that uh, was uh, uh, discussed or that was flagged was that uh, while uh, the contemporary urban planning in India is over 100 years old, it is by and large uh, what we have inherited from the European urban laws, which perhaps today are not really appropriate to the way in which the country is moving forward. Uh, while India has a very uh, great uh, history and legacy of ancient principles of urban planning and so on, uh, in the contemporary modern day context, how do we make urban planning more specific and particularly India specific, the way in which India is moving forward. And for the next 25 years, Amrit Kal, as we uh, are now calling it, uh, how do we how do we take this forward? So it has to be a blend of the traditional principles as well as the modern emerging technologies. So today we are talking about the sustainable development goals, climate change. We have limited resources. There are environmental concerns. So how do we shape education with all these in focus? Number one. Number two is that technology has changed substantially. The way we did urban planning in the past uh, has moved on, and today. The uh, Honorable PM himself has mentioned about drone technology, for instance, the way we do surveys, the whole technology orientation is completely changed. So how can we bring all of this? Uh, so, so our basic approach uh, should change. And also there is the, there was a feeling expressed that uh, we need to look people, we need to place people at the center of urban planning. Cities are meant for people and therefore it cannot be a top down approach. It has to be a bottom up approach. And, and the way in which we look at uh, urban planning has to change. And we need to dovetail existing approaches to the emerging approaches. So uh, uh, to make all this happen, uh, there are broadly two sets of people or stakeholders 
uh, one is uh, the practitioners and the other is the educationists. Now, how do we bridge the gap between the both of them? Uh, so on the education side, we have the schools of planning and architecture. We have some of the IITs, some of the NITs and some other institutions. And of course, AICT and other regulators are there and they are doing their best in terms of providing education in terms of either bachelor's degree programs or master's degree programs. But that may not really be uh, the order of the necessity of the day, because when you look at the practitioners who are the town planning departments, the urban local bodies, the municipal bodies, there are organizations called the special purpose vehicles or the smart city corporations. What are their requirements? So I think there is some kind of a mismatch that was expressed by our uh, panelists. And therefore, we need to we need to marry both of them. And then there are also other organizations like the administrative training institutes in most of the states. Then there are centers for urban studies, which the government has been funding. Uh, and at the same time, a lot of city building, a lot of urban planning is actually being done by the real estate developers. So uh, when you look across this. Limited capacities, so, so uh, centrally, uh, squarely and surely capacity building is the center of uh, our discussion. And that was also uh, mentioned in the in the budget that uh, capacity building has to be enhanced. So capacity building for various stakeholders who are the practitioners, uh, they, they may not have the patience or the time or the ability to sit for long. So short term programs, online programs, practice oriented programs, thematic programs on very, very specific themes, short duration, maybe one week, maybe weekend programs and so on and so forth. These all have to be tailor made specifically to enhance the capacities of the people in the practice. They could be private consultants, they could be municipal corporation officials, they could be municipal commissioners, they could be town planners at the chief level, or they could be town planners at the bottom level. <laughs> so a series of these capacity building programs need to be rolled out. At the same time, for the uh, emerging generation, the next 25 years is going to see a completely new set of people. Many of the people who are now at the helm of the affairs will be retiring soon. So how do you create that new crop of urban planners who will take our vision forward and in the next 25 years of Amrit Kal? So long-term futuristic employable kind of capacity building is required for them. So, so those, their educational themes, there are a series of this. If you look at the northeastern part of India, hill area planning becomes extremely important. <laughs> Natural disasters become very important. Coastal areas, climate change. India has a very long coastline. Things will be very different there. Most of our urban planners are uh, rather reluctant to get into uh, financial matters, preparation of detailed project reports and so on and so forth. Because unless and until you are comfortable in dealing with uh, finances, you are, you are uh, at a loss. Uh, Public-private partnerships. Increasingly, we need to bring in the private sector who can deliver better, but you have to have those negotiation skills, contract management skills. Many of these things are not conventionally taught in the conventional town planning courses as we see them. So, uh, legal issues, for instance, become extremely important. On the technology side, geographical information systems, GIS, uh, drone technology for surveying, there are many states who have just now started and even under the uh, existing uh, Amrit program and so on, uh, 500 GIS master plans are on the annual by the ministry itself. But then what about the thousands of other cities? So a lot of this has to happen. Land valuation, uh, social science orientation, urban management and governance, because ultimately urban plans can be prepared. The best of plans can be prepared. If they are not implemented, uh, then nothing is going to move forward. So how can we uh, overhaul the urban management and governance. So, so, and then water is a very important resource. So there are many, many such uh, emerging areas. So we have to have thematic programs and we have to launch these thematic capacity building programs as short capsules. And at the same time, uh, in tune with the uh, national education policy, NEP 2020, we need to have a very wide menu so that uh, people can pick and choose and, and uh, tailor-made programs, choice-based academic menus, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, we need to reorient our pedagogy so that more flexibility is brought in. Uh, maybe uh, we need to bring in uh, some amount of computer knowledge, some amount of um, uh, electronics, uh, some amount of uh, governance management. 
many of these things interdisciplinarity has to be also brought in uh, there's a lot of uh, best practice sharing that was also recommended by the members and uh, the, then continuous updation of curriculum was also suggested uh, the all india council for Te uh, technical aicte uh, has a has a board on urban planning and the uh, technology upgradation has already been initiated there industry institute collaborations and internships and tech technology orientation and skilling all these are uh, necessary there is a proposal in the budget on which some amount of discussion took place the budget proposed the setting up of five centers of excellence so it was felt by our members that uh, these centers should not be like universities again conducting uh, the conventional degree programs or postgraduate programs but they should be doing cutting edge research they should they should be uh, looking at the future they should be inclusive and diverse they should also be on a cluster model uh, meaning thereby that there should be one center of excellence and around that center of excellence they can be tie ups collaborations mous with with several uh, nearby surrounding institutions in other disciplines so that there can be a cross pollination of ideas and as a cluster each center of excellence can move forward and they should also adopt uh, one or more cities in the neighborhood for demonstration because uh, all theory and no practice is is not the um, objective so uh, whatever in these centers of excellence whatever new knowledge that emerges that should actually be tested and tried out in 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 uh, demonstration cities so that the implementation there can actually happen and of course it should be data driven because it has to be uh, scientific and it should not be on a, a gut feeling so these were by and large the various uh, uh, lines of thought that emerged uh, in this particular uh, um, session it was a very invigorating and and um, uh, interesting session and uh, the detailed report is under preparation the presentation that i have made uh, just now is by no means comprehensive there were many many other points which i am not mentioning due to limited time but we will uh, we have not really worked out any timelines as of now but uh, I think by the time that has been given the deadline of uh, the 24th of Feb, we will certainly work out all the other details and we will submit the detailed report uh, uh, by, by the deadline. So uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I now request Sri Ved Tiwari, CEO, NSDC, to present the report of the fifth group? Good evening, Honorable Minister of State for Education, Secretaries, School Education and Learning and Higher Education, Secretary, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Uh, I would like to start this presentation with some short clip what Honorable Prime Minister said today morning by launching the program.
so uh, what when we heard in the uh, so this was the theme of the breakout session five towards fostering strong industry skill linkage and the message was of the prime minister was apt this is what we heard throughout the uh, webinar uh, this webinar was co-chaired by secretary dpiit secretary ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and secretary tourism uh, dgt dg dg tourism represented secretary tourism uh, as co-chair uh, these are the these were the panelists, Mr. Kalsi, uh, Chairman National Council for Vocational Education, Mr. Manish Savarwar, and Mr. Ambadube. Let's go to next. Uh, about 13, uh, 16 participants participated in the interactive mode. Next. So, one of the key uh, topics which came up for discussion was how Desh can solve the uh, the problem of trust, finance, and discovery. Uh, through the protocols and the specifications, and uh, multiple speakers talked about it. Uh, even Secretary DPI IT uh, linked Desh as a as a possible solution to skilling for uh, Gati Shakti, and also uh, tourism also considered that Desh uh, technology st stack can help solve the uh, skilling problem in a tourism area. I just want to clarify here that Desh is a, is a actually internetization of uh, digital uh, skills because it's not a port portal. It's a protocol which allows the various apps and uh, networks and platforms to uh, be connected uh, through the technological infrastructure and talk to each other. This is a description of a Desh architecture. Desh consists of protocols, standards, specification, sandbox, reference, and governance. If you see on the left side, there are government platforms and there are private platforms and the financial institutions. They all can come together, use Desh tech stack, and can enable services to learners, trainers, and industry. This is how uh, uh, just kidding. During the course of webinar, we uh, heard a lot of things about ease of skilling. Uh, digital training access was one of the criteria, uh, which where the anytime, anywhere, on demand, uh, skilling was uh, uh, resonating during the discussion. E with their digital labs, national digital universities were the consistent theme across. Omni channel access through web, mobile, tablets, TV, radio, etc. And online, offline, and blended modes, all modes. So these are these were the digital uh, pointers. On types of skilling, uh, the un unlearning, learning to learn soft skilling, multi skilling, reskilling, and upskilling were the demand from all the sector experts. The sectors which were identified by the participants in the webinar were medical, technical, uh, tourism, drones, AVGC, and defense. Uh, everybody was of the view that uh, the skill ecosystem has to be multilingual, uh, including foreign languages. As our prime minister said that uh, there is a need for uh, us to uh, leverage our demographic dividend and to make India as a skill capital of the world. And it has to be contextual. It, it is to be inclusive, including, including people with disabilities, the divyangs, uh, localized training and entrepreneurship opportunities. So, vocal for local uh, in the true context where local resources, local tenant, and local market uh, needs to be nurtured. E skilling labs uh, were also uh, an important uh, initiative which was underlined in this. On courses side, industry linked trainings and content development. A dynamic RSQ of framework, the chairman and CBT uh, outlined and both chairman and secretary uh, skill development outlined that there is a 20% uh, flexibility is being brought in the RSQ of courses where industry will be able to uh, tune it to their as per their comment. Emerging technologies across all sectors were considered uh, important for inclusion in the skilling framework. The way forward was that the, it has to be taken as an ecosystem approach. Uh, one, one stakeholder will not be able to unleash uh, the power that the uh, the entire society can unleash. We, we heard uh, during the first four breakout session also, 
that there's a consistent theme of education and skills talking to each other and, and that can happen only when uh, the government to government integration happens through api integration of existing portals like e-migrate epf oesic etc development of new portal for jobs apprenticeship and skilling platform government to business government to uh, the databases that are available with government has to enable businesses through financial assistance branding credentials e-rupee business plan and prototyping government to citizen through e-skill loans e-rupee career events scholarship fellowship credentials and the uh, ecosystem they sh stack should also enable business to business interactions in terms of credentials financial assistance analytical reports business plan and prototyping business to consumer job alerts career and uh, coach career, career coaches training job satisfaction survey skill readiness pre employment uh, assessment scholarships skill loans consultancy services vouchers resume builders career events a range of uh, uh, services which can be delivered to citizens uh, by enabling business to consumer interactions. And when consumer to consumer interactions happen, the magic happens. Every citizen in this country can interact with the other citizens through career coaches. Uh, one, one citizen can be career coach to another citizen. Uh, resume builders, somebody can help someone build their resumes, digital badges, consultation services, job fairs, mock mock tests, career events. These are powerful uh, initiatives that, that on a capacity building uh, front and regulatory requirement, the stakeholders that were identified were students, employers, trainers, training providers, assessors, assessment agencies, content providers, financial institutions, and donors. So for all these uh, stakeholders, the, there's a, uh, when we identified the focus should be on the cap capacity building focus, has to move towards trainers and teachers because they constitute the vital link in the skilling. They have to be enabled for digital delivery of training. This is not which comes naturally to a, a teaching community, but they have to be enabled for digital delivery of training. Administrators, the administrators have to learn how to manage skilling and vocational training through digital platforms. Sector skill councils uh, act as they should act as knowledge partners to both business and the government. Uh, development of cluster specific ded uh, specific dedicated skill hubs we have seen a uh, slew of uh, pli schemes and other uh, government schemes which want to make india as the most preferred destination for manufacturing and uh, that's where the sector skill councils can play an important role by identifying dedicated skills hubs in those areas co-creators and co-designers for all skill uh, needs of both uh, government and, and, the, and the private sector the regulatory requirements that were uh, identified were ease of standardizing, managing QP's NOS, proof of reputation, education, work and skills. Secretary MSD talked about that a welder in, in Maruti, if he has done an, an amount, a number of uh, weldings in, in a specialized manner, the person should be able to port that uh, reputation to uh, when, when the person switches the job. Inter-ministerial committee for unified credit system. All these uh, were considered as a uh, regular comment for this. Now, how do we link ongoing initiatives with the with the identification, new identification that we have? The existing in initiatives we have that uh, Ministry of Skill Development and Ministry of Education have come together to launch skill hub initiatives in schools and dedicated to uh, in schools. There is a similar need for skills hubs in dedicated economic zones so that that is one uh, requirement image api integration of ex existing portals of e-migrate epfo esic udyam ncs these have been announced in the budget we have to take them forward launch of skill india portal 2 for better g2c b2b b2c g2c uh, these are acronyms but we talked about them in the previous slides how powerful they are uh, from ncvt a uh, lot of uh, uh, enabling things were talked about chairman and CVT that grid system for vocational education modules with industry linkages and SSCs focus on emerging technology like AI, IoT, ML and blockchains and tools etc. Tourism uh, there was discussion about new concepts like wellness tourism, medical tourism, adventure tourism and homestays uh, and all these new initiatives requires new skills. Curriculum prepared in consultation with Federation of Tourism and Tour, tour Operators and 400 new Vande Bharat, Bharat trains planned 
will improve connectivity and generate employment. So the, all these will uh, enhance uh, tourism and will require new. Uh, uh, when we discuss about drones, uh, there was very vibrant discussion. Uh, I'm thankful to Joint Secretary, Ministry of Civil Aviation, Mr. Ambar Dubey, who very uh, actively and lively uh, participated with the industry. And what emerged was that scaling of drone training ac uh, across the country. Nobody is denying the utilization of drones uh, for, for but what we need to do is mass scale uh, quality training across the country. Industry linked NLSQ of aligned content and facilitating drone Shakti through various applications for drone as a, uh, as a service. Uh, employment generation opportunities, uh, both uh, domestic overseas uh, were uh, explored. Uh, sectors initially which can be targeted are medical, technical, tourism, drone, AVGC and defense. Gati Shakti also offers opportunity through unified logistics interface portal which will open up many opportunities in multiple sectors. Uh, industry skill linkages expand startup ecosystem in five years. Connect their stack with the startup ecosystem. Uh, overseas opportunities, uh, transparent process, Skill India International skill to, to make Skill India as a skill capital of the world. Entrepreneurship uh, emerged as a, as a very dominant theme during the discussion and uh, many uh, participants talked about an online portal for connecting entrepreneurs for available skill opportunities and for services including sourcing of raw materials, branding, market access, mentoring, counseling and also uh, to connect them to gig workers because they, they, they require gig workers to uh, grow their businesses. These were the timelines that were discussed that Desh is going to be an enabler for skill ecosystem. And the timelines that you see here uh, basically says that launch of new Skill India platform uh, is targeted in the month of April. Uh, the portal integration of uh, within MSD, NAPS, SME skill should be done by July. MSD portal integration uh, or the Skill India portal integration with uh, Skill India platform also by July. Integration approach and full integration with portals of other ministries like each from Udyam, ESIC, NDR, NCS, EPFO, E-Migrate. These all uh, need to be done by October. Integration with EU universities and LMS system by December. Convergence of Skill India portal with the Skill India platform by April next year. API services for registry and credentialing for external stakeholders by February next year. And the, there will be four, uh, five drops in this API services for registering traditionally for students. Drop one will be students, trainers, content providers, and skill providers. That's targeted by the month of May. Drop two will, will include uh, assessors and assessment agencies also, and skill providers. That is targeted for the month of August. Drop three will include employers, alumni, media, PR agency, which will go up to October. And drop four will comprise of final funding institutions and CSR donors which is targeted for December and drop five is data analytics, which will go up to the April next year. And then there's a maintenance and support uh, system to be developed for this comprehensive uh, ecosystem. So all that goes up to April. Thank you so much. This was all that was discussed. Today. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tiwari. Can I now request Professor Yogesh Singh, Vice Chancellor, Delhi University to present the report of his group. Good evening to all of you. Our session uh, is breakout session six related to developing foreign educational institutions in gift city. Yes, your slide is visible. Please proceed. Uh, okay, okay. You guys say. Yes. So, uh, in this session, uh, which is related to the development of 
foreign educational institutions in Gift City. And uh, we were having uh, a panel of accomplished uh, experts, uh, Chairman Ifsa uh, Injadi Singh, Sudhir Mankarji, and uh, Taranji Singh Sandhu, India Ambassador to USA, Ashish Diwan, and Professor Sudhir Jain, and there were some other distinguished participants also. This session is based on a budget statement uh, given by the Honorable Finance Minister. World-class foreign universities and institutions will be allowed in gift city to offer courses in financial management, fintech, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics free from domestic regulations except those by IFSA to facilitate availability of high-end human resources for financial services and technology. Now here, uh, one uh, thing which is very, very important here, which we have to understand is that free from domestic regulations and some regulations will be provided by the International Financial, Financial Service Center Authority, which will look after the, uh, the issues related to the foreign institutions, which will be established in Gil City. And here, uh, the, uh, we discussed about the various aspects. The first and the foremost and the most important is the criteria for establish establishment of foreign universities institutions in the gift city. What should be the criteria? Then the procedural aspects of uh, onboarding and then the governance issues and the legal aspects. All are equally important because when uh, UGC and AICT regulations are not applicable, then there are some legal issues also which are to be discussed and the governance related issues. So criteria to establish the foreign institutions, we say first is the willingness to set up physical campuses in Gibbs City. Yeah, uh, with the willing, uh, with 100% offshore operations, including management to run three levels of higher education, UG, PG, and PhD. Here it means what? When a student uh, uh, will take admission in any of such institution, he or she should have the feel of a world-class institution. It should not be implemented uh, with the low spirits or, or you know, without proper facilities. So to have that world-class facilities, they should be willing to invest, willing to transfer faculty, willing to recruit faculty. Then also when it comes to the quality, because that is very important. And this is a very, very good initiative of Government of India. If we are able to implement it correctly, with the uh, with right kind of uh, institutions, then the purpose will be served. So the institutions which will come here should be the top 500 QS or Times Higher Education ranking in at least in the last three years. So that is one of the benchmark for the quality. After Professor that is Yogesh. accreditation. Professor Yogesh. Yes. Your screen is not visible. Yes, please. Can you just your screen, screen is, is not, not visible? visible. Okay, uh, let me. Uh, just a second. It was visible, actually. Huh? It is okay. I don't it is see. Visible, visible. The screen is visible throughout. Yes. Yeah, we could see no, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Please carry on. Yes, carry on. visible. All sides visible. Then uh, 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 another important parameter when we talk about quality is the accreditation. So institution which is coming here, one is the placed in the first 500 World University Rankings. Second is accreditation by nationally recognized accrediting agency or association of the country of origin. If a university uh, is coming from UK, then UK agency will take care US or some international and or the country of origin. Then they should have expertise here it is not for all disciplines. It is related to science, technology, engineering, mathematics, financial technology, financial management. So the university or institution should have domain knowledge in these areas and reputation also. Then, uh, you know, without finances, uh, we cannot achieve the target. So we say the proven track record in financial stability. And when a university is coming here, then duration of operation we feel that it should be at least they should come for 20 years. This is the minimum, but uh, uh, maximum, you know, depending upon the performance and so many other issues. Then the procedural aspect after the criteria, which uh, is quite uh, flexible, 
and but not easy to achieve uh, for uh, those institutions which are not that good. Then the procedural authorization from the relevant stakeholders of the respective countries. Suppose NOC is required, they should taken from this. Should, it should be taken from that country. Suppose uh, they have some legal aspects, legal issues. So that country should take care of that because this is a place. Gift city is a place where these institutions will be governed by most of the rules and regulations of the country of origin. Then, but you know. Because International Financial uh, Service Center Authority uh, will also specify some rules, regulations. They should uh, they should comply with those regulations. So, I if some compliances are also equally important. But you know they uh, they will not come in contradiction. But they will support each other, which we feel. Uh, and then fun funding and financial structure. Uh, the st administrative structure of that university and the country of origin will be applicable. Finances also, they have to decide what to do. Uh, but the curriculum, which is also very important and treatment of the curriculum, we expect that similar type of curriculum and similar treatment should be there in this gift city also in order to have quality in the systems and processes of the university. Then comes to the governance of foreign universities and institutions. If so, will provide a regulatory ecosystem, very flexible, open uh, type of a regulatory ecosystem for provisioning of seamless mechanisms for operations, services, and delivery. For example, here not for profit, the that will not be applicable. But you know, the uh, institutions will uh, uh, will be for uh, uh, profit making, but how much? This and some some other things, but most of the rules will be. Someone is coming from UK, those will be applicable. Someone is coming from US, those will be applicable. But yes, IFSA will, IFSA will also provide some regulations. Then guidelines for admitting Indian students in these institutions at all levels. Uh, eligibility, equivalence of degrees, etc. as per norms of the country of origin. Suppose we are taking admission in Oxford University, the rules, regulations, procedures, systems applicable in the origin, they are that will be applicable here. And uh, then this is an open thing, whether we want to give special provisions for Indian students. Right now, uh, this is a global concept. Every student will be uh, considered equally without any reservations, without any special privileges. Uh, privileges here, but legal aspect. Legal aspects are also equally important when, because this is Something a very specialized zone. We are providing special facilities to such institutions. Uh, so, synchronization of IFSAs and foreign institutions regulations, then clear line of authority for the operations of the foreign universities. Land is also a very uh, typical issue here. Land to be arranged as specified by the gift city, because gift. Uh, when we were discussing, the chairman gift said that we give land free of cost to a developer, and then the developer. Uh, 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 developer build uh, a building, it's a vertical city, and after that facilities are provided by the gift. So depending upon whatever, then they may charge rent or thing as specified by the gift city, those uh, rules will be applicable here. Then is the jurisdiction related to legal matters will be specified by IFSA, because if some crime happens, then what will happen? Should the uh, the uh, jurisdiction of the the police thana or the legal framework or the jurisdiction of the this will be specified by the regulations or the rules specified and framed by the IFSA for the same purpose. When it comes to the timeline, timeline IFSA and Gift City will decide the timeline for setting up such institutions. It may take one year. Uh, for the establishment of rules and regulations, so we may start from the from the academic session 23-24, or uh, or or the next session subsequently. That will be decided by these two authorities, Gift City and IFSA. Uh, uh, IFSA, and with these words, uh, I conclude my presentation. Thank you, Professor Yogesh. Uh, can I now request Sri Biren Ghosh? Vice Chairman CII Media and Entertainment Council to present the report of his group. Last and this is the uh, last group before we will have the remarks of, after that we'll have remarks of 
श्री राजीव चंद्रशेखर जी एम ओ एस एम एस डी गुड इवनिंग एंड प्रेजर टू बी हियर एट दिस वंडरफुल इवेंट वी हैड अ वेरी वेरी कंस्ट्रक्टिव मॉर्निंग विद प्रेजेंटेशंस अक्रॉस द एवीजीसी लैंडस्केप माय task is to present you the strengthening of industry skill linkage in avgc so i'm hoping that you can uh, see my screen and i'd like to uh, begin by thanking our chairperson and co-chair uh, shri apurva chandra ji from the ministry of information and broadcasting and uh, shri atul kumar tiwari ji uh, from the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship we had a wonderful panel comprising of ashish kulkarni munjal shroff and ketan yadav but over and above that we also had uh, 11 uh, stellar voices from the industry that contributed to this very large and diverse uh, group that we have across animation visual effects games and comics this industry if we're going back about 15 years was a very young industry and hardly comprised about a couple of percent 1 or 2% of the total media and entertainment landscape in india if we look at the last year this is already a, between 11 and 12% of the total media and ent entertainment landscape and because of its influence and its growth within the film television uh, and content creation community it is now expected to be somewhere in the region of 17 to 18% just in the next 3 to 4 years time so the current global market for this sector is approximately 275 million dollars and we currently uh, are just a very small percent of that although the growth rate has been very impressive and one of the reasons why this is being discussed today is that it has been recognized as a champion sector a few years ago because it can catapult its jobs by 3 to 4 times in the next 5 to 7 years time and this conversation is regard with regard to how that could possibly happen so one of the outcomes of this if i can summarize this on one slide is that there was a very very a clear indication that uh, as announced by the finance minister in the budget and uh, the opening remarks from our honorable prime minister uh, this morning we do see that the construct of an avgc task force would be a a, a, a a very good way to take forward this agenda in 2022 itself and so sustained growth is never really the result of pure chance and i think what we are doing in this presentation is to put down the milestones to do that uh one of the elements of course will be the academic orientation of this industry the next is what industry itself can do to make it happen and how does skilling and innovation play a role in the scheme of things so in the budget 2022 it has been mandated that this task force will realize the potential of this sector and engage all the stakeholders and recommend strategies and methods to employ people to build domestic capacity as well as to scale the already very large influence that this sector has in terms of its international reach and opportunity uh, many of you on the call know that many of the large uh, productions in the world in hollywood in the uk in other parts of the world in animation and visual effects is uh, it comes from the engine room that india has created across many of the studios particularly in the in the west and the south of the country and that can be scaled to other places as well so among the other areas of the avgc task force is to uh, finalize the rollout of an avgc policy uh, associations like the cii and fiki have put forward certain recommendations which are under discussion and uh, the most important opportunity right now for 2022 is the creation of a, a national uh, center of excellence that we'll talk about uh, in in a, in a in a little bit the uh, skilling programs and the initiatives uh, that we have talked about are a collaboration between existing academic institutions and industry and ways to make sure that the international standards of skilling as we've heard in some of the previous presentations across uh, you know the way to skill upskill educate and deliver content uh, will be uh, will be augmented by uh, by 
by this process with this paper. The academic orientation that we talked about was to really start, you know, at a younger age, and I think there's the new education policy opens the doors to to make uh, make creative skills a part and parcel of when children and parents can choose to go into the uh, the more design led uh, creative uh, creative uh, pathways. Uh, it was mentioned in our meeting that many of the artists and technicians that come into our industry today come from rural and semi urban areas and they in fact are the front runners that have actually created this success in the last 10 to 15 years and one of the ways that uh, this could really happen is to enable uh, the ed education sector in animation visual effects and games to be able to avail of student loans because currently banks do not recognize this sector as uh, um, as 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 a um, as qualified to 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 offer student loans, and finally, while we've already seen a great success with thirty or forty universities now offering degree courses uh, in BFA and BSc in animation and so on and so forth, but it was felt that there needs to be a standardization, and uh, for that we need to do a number of things. As you can see here, train the trainer. Models need to get standardized so that we can make sure that it spreads uniformly across the country. Uh, we have the uh, Media and Entertainment Skills Council that has been a part of the uh, NSDC that has done a lot of seminal work in the last uh, four to five years, but that can play a further role in, in making sure that we can uh, make, a, make a, a bigger gateway into some of the new areas, uh, one of them being games. And the gaming uh, sector today on the call talked about the fact that their capsules and their programs are very much a work in progress, even though they are in, in, in financial terms and business terms, the fastest growing sector in this area. And finally, there was a suggestion that mentorship can play a very, very large role in this industry. And today the top practitioners are being requested to say, can we create a bank where we, they devote a certain number of hours every year to, to ensure that the Guru Shiksha model will work out and a platform can be created for the for that purpose. Uh, we talked about the industrial collaboration in areas uh, uh, where the National Center of Excellence would um, have a dedicated task force that looks at how industry would participate in curriculum creation, make more professionals industry ready. And the, the idea was that while we started with more basic skill sets that we were working on in a global collaboration, uh, roto, rotoscopy and match move and things that were at the lower end of the AVDC, AVDC chain, today the top studios have already moved to higher value jobs in the production of uh, this content. But if we were able to come into the development and the pre-production in writing, ideating, and, and things that currently are not that scalable in India, this is where the high value jobs uh, uh, really lie. And that was talked about in some detail and will form part of the recommendations for what we do, both in terms of the policy as well as the, the center. And finally, people have often talked about technology as being a main driver of this industry. It is creativity that drives it, but technology plays a very key role and also improves at a very rapid pace. Everyone on this call knows how their phones, how their television sets and other devices keep getting more sophisticated with more pixels uh, and, and therefore the, the need to create content that looks uh, outstanding on that rises with each passing year. Uh, in that area, we've also seen that the V of AVGC, the visual effects has become a very key ingredient, ingredient in, the, in, the, in the way film, television, games, are created. This is now 20, 30, 40%, sometimes even 80% of the total budget uh, of creating a, of creating a film. And here, I think the, the idea was that we need to understand that besides pure creativity and artistry, there are also engineering elements that become key component components to, to drive this, uh, this, this forward. Um, somehow at the level of parents, our neighbors, people across this call uh, know this very well that today this is not an aspirational industry. 
when we have friends in the US or the UK whose kids get into art college, there's a celebration. When some of the kids get into really good art colleges in India, the question gets asked, what happened? Why didn't they go to the more, become a doctor, an engineer, a chartered accountant, and so on and so forth? And I think one of the things we'll be doing as a part of this entire campaign is to bring the understanding uh, to, to uh, across the country as to what the country has already achieved and what headroom is available for this industry as a career choice. In this regard, it was also thought that collaborating with the best festivals in the world, the best awards in the world, which we do win when we do work on an outsourcing basis, should also become part of our landscape and that we should be providing these incentive structures for, for our young, uh, young kids to, to aspire to, to win them. Um, the IP creation in this business is, uh, can be divided into two segments. One of them is when we create a product or we create a show or we create a franchise and that story becomes an intellectual property in itself. And we want to do that on a larger scale than India. We want to make sure that we can do this on a global basis. So instead of it being valued at 100 or 200 or 250 crores, like some of the biggest properties in India are today, we can aspire to make them half a billion or a billion dollars, like we see in Korea and Japan and France and Canada and the US. And that's really the goal in front of us on, as far as IP is concerned. We want to make this a cool sector for kids, as they call it. On the games front, this is a very, very fast growing area. Came to India a little late, but the proliferation of mobile phones and 5G uh, is going to make it huge. Just in the pandemic, I think the user base grew from some 265 million people to about 465 million people. And this is an unusual form of content because it creates uh, interactivity, it creates uh, user generation, people find their own story, their own, their own pathway across the landscape of creating a game. And the content is becoming multifaceted. So when you hear about the new immersive media, you hear about the metaverse, games has really given everyone the taste of what can happen in a multi-sensory world that goes beyond the camera, that goes beyond just the sound and the picture that you see on a, on a conventional TV or a movie story. And I, I heard many examples in the last five presentations on how their industry or their sectors are looking at getting gamified through design and development and interactivity on its own. So I think we have a very, very complementary group that, that we were listening to. The other thing is that when I look at the projects that we are looking at today in India, people are looking at the immersive media. The largest application of virtual reality today in India is defense that is using VR for training. Uh, education that is using VR for medical training for people that don't have to anywhere, they can learn surgery through simulation. And in a sense, A, B, G, and C are the combination of imagery and simulation. So the, the applications there are endless. The other thing about VR, although it's a little clunky with the bigger glasses today, but that will get solved, is that our minds can be completely, completely immersed in a matter of a few seconds, you are in another world. And that I think poses huge, huge opportunities for us to take India to the world. There are very few people that visit as many temples as their great grandparents did or their grandparents did. But today we can bring those temples, we can bring those monuments and we can bring those places to them and they can actually be walking around with them while just sitting in their own homes. I think that's the potential that we have when we talked about things like, uh, you know, coming back to our basics. Uh, on the comic book front, it was articulated that comics themselves are the pilot for all creativity. And I think the fact that one of our largest comic book producers talked about having two or three million users just on their platform was impressive, but doesn't compare with the social media reach of Virat Kohli. So it has to be much, much greater if we want to really explore and explore the world with uh, what we can do. And I think the NEP 2020 uh, is talking about how those, how we can scale those ideas and those opportunities uh, going further. Finally, we had some educators on the call and uh, they talked about the importance of using our national channels. We've spoken about them in the many channels that were coming out from, uh, from the previous speakers of how can we take AVGC as a career option and, and bring more people into the AVGC uh, uh, courses and curriculum 
because our issue is not giving them jobs. Our issue is finding the, the right talent with the right aptitude, giving them the right education and bringing them and making this industry uh, the champion sector that it is it is uh, has the potential to become. So I would like to just say that um, a big thank you to the 11 participants that were there, uh, to the ministries involved in putting this together. Uh, uh, it's been a it's been a, a very very good post budget uh, capture of uh, what we want to do as, uh, and I will I will stop sharing my screen. Uh, and, and pause here. The detailed report will be published shortly. I think our goal from the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting is to have a plan for the National Center of uh, uh, Excellence, hopefully by the in the first half of this calendar year itself. Uh, we would definitely want to work from that point onwards in order to scale this industry and, and help it reach the potential that has been uh, heralded in the uh, budget as well as in the in the discussions thereafter. So. Thank you very much for uh, for for uh, receiving this report. Thank you, Shri Biren Ghosh. Uh, it's my privilege now to invite Shri Rajiv Chandrasekhar Ji, Honorable MOS uh, uh, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, for his remarks. can't hear you, sir. Sir's mic is switched off. Can NIC help? I can see that the mic is switched off. What the Sir, can you see? Yes, thank you. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. My, my colleague, uh, Dr. Subhash Sarkar, in the Council of Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, having me over to speak. It, uh, I understand it's been a long day, uh, but I think uh, I am. Uh, I have spent over 15 years in politics, and I think this is a, a, a fundamentally a powerful idea. This idea of using the intervening break between the budget sessions to actually uh, discuss budget proposals and ideas with the important stakeholders in the concerned uh, sector. And I think this is a good idea, and this has been an uh, excellent uh, example of a of that uh, that effort. Uh, earlier in the morning, the Honorable Prime Minister said in his speech, uh, he laid out uh, and he said, education as a, and skills as a foundation for Amrit Kal. Uh, and uh, he has also spoken about how digitally empowered youth will make this decade India's decade. And I think there is a context to that vision. There is a context to that thought that because over the last two years, we have fought this black swan event of unprecedented black swan event of uh, COVID-19 and have fought uh, this attack on lives and livelihoods that have affected countries and people all around the world. And our response at the end of those two years, if you look back, has been outstanding and has been an inspiration to most countries and most people. Whether it is va vaccine, whether it is the fact that we maintain social order in delivering the vaccine, in sharp contrast to major Western countries around the world, the economic recovery, the reforms, the new economic thinking of Atmanirbhar Bharat, and this new momentum to entrepreneurship at the tail end of this COVID pandemic. So in a lot of ways, I think, uh, when the Honorable Prime Minister talks about this imagining our future and reimagining our future, we are justified. And a force multiplier for that is going to be the new education policy, which I personally consider one of the biggest reforms in independent India's history in the field of education. 
And there, again, there is a context. There are tectonic changes that are happening to the world of industry. There are tectonic changes that are happening to businesses, consumer lives, and governments as we speak. There is changes in technology, Industry 4.0, Web 3.0, accelerating digitization of governments, digitization of consumers' lives, digitization of businesses. So the, all of this is contributing for us to really look, sit here and imagine and reimagine the future, not just of how our economies will be, but also about how, what role skilling and education will play in, 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 our, uh, in our future in, in, that, uh, in, in the coming years. On the 15th of July, about seven days after I was given this, uh, or the privilege and honor to be a minister in skill development and entrepreneurship, the Honorable Prime Minister addressed us. And he said, amongst many things, he said, it is time for us to build on what we have achieved in skilling over the last five years and repurpose and look to the coming years in the post-COVID uh, context with a, with a new design and a new purpose. And it is in that context today that Skill India is being is not just being integrated with education on one hand, but Skill India is being redesigned and refocused with the following four or five attributes that I'll share with you. We are now going to focus skilling on the student, the allowing him and her, him or her, to easily access the skilling ecosystem. We are going to make employment and entrepreneurship the fundamental outcomes of skilling. The range of skilling programs are going to range from blue collar to white collar and not just the traditional uh, uh, approach to skilling, which is to address the bottom of the pyramid uh, types of uh, workforce demand. The programs of skilling are going to be much more flexible in the sense that there is not going to be a one shoe fit, uh, fits all kind of a model driven by a regulator in Delhi, but we have urged the regulator, we will work and we are working with the regulator NCBT to ensure that there are from the 4,000 odd skilling programs today, we proliferate and expand this to a larger number of programs and the process by which we respond to dynamic needs for skilling by rapid changing industry needs will be much more faster and more flexible. One more, out, one more uh, attribute in this redesign Skill India is the fact that we will also focus on skilling op opportunities for international employment and international uh, uh, opportunities. Core to all of this, as the Honorable Prime Minister said, is going to be digital skilling. And digital skilling obviously implies that there is skilling in the digital domain and using digital platforms to deliver skilling. On the first, skilling in the digital domain, it is very clear in the post-COVID world, regardless of whether you're in manufacturing, regardless of whether you're in services, regardless of, regardless of whether you're a micro-entrepreneur, or regardless of whether you are going to be employed by the government or the state or a local body government, Digital skills are an absolutely inalienable requirement for the workforce of today and tomorrow. So digital skilling to be incorporated almost as a foundational element of all skilling programs is the direction that we are determined to go and that is, what, that is the direction that we are going. The other part of digital skilling is the ability to use digital platforms and there is a reference in the budget to Desh uh, uh, using a digital platform to extend the skilling network and allow those who are currently unable to access the skilling network to access skilling. And number one, number two, to ensure that the digital skilling ecosystem allows in one place the entire process for students to assess their, at, their, uh, their strengths, choose a particular skills, program to, uh, to uh, uh, enroll in, uh, go through the program, get those digital skills, use the same platform for look, looking for employment or micro-entrepreneurship opportunities, and the same flat platform treating the student as a student who may be ab initio skilled, but will 
be a prospective reskilling candidate prospective upskilling candidate and a prospective multi-skilling candidate so therefore the prime minister's vision that skilling is not just about a one time interaction between the skilling ecosystem and the student but is a continuous lifetime experience of skilling reskilling upskilling and uh, multiple skilling is the inherent design of the uh, digital platform that skill india is uh, uh, embarked on working on i i don't want to speak very much more i'm sure it's been a long day and many people have spoken and i'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm i went through the list of programs i think those uh, those groups have done uh, they have spoken about excellent topics i will only say this in ending that while we talk about uh, the uh, the next 25 years and the journey for the next 25 years while we talk about the next decade being india's decade it is absolutely clear in my mind and uh, i don't claim to be the the um, uh, 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 you know the brightest person about education nor am i the most experienced in education and skilling but intuitively i can add to all of what has been spoken here this whole day and say that the biggest catalyst and the biggest enabler and the most powerful enabler for india's ambition to become really a world class leader in technology entrepreneurship and uh, grow our economy and opportunities is going to be to leverage our new education policy and the investments made by this budget in education and skilling to the maximum possible and to ensure the a largest number of indian youth get access to these initiatives and these programs and these platforms so that they can use these to transform their future and to pursue their life's ambitions and dreams and create prosperity for themselves and their communities thank you thank you very much again for your patient listen thank you jai hind thank you very much sir uh, uh, ab main uh... डॉक्टर सुभाष सरकार जी माननीय शिक्षा राज्य मंत्री जी से अनुरोध करूंगा कि वो अपने समापन विचार को सामने रखें नाउ वी आर इन कंक्लूडिंग सेशन ऑफ अचीविंग आत्मनिर्भरता थ्रू द अमृत मंत्र ऑफ डिजिटल एजुकेशन एंड डायनेमिक स्किलिंग इन द मॉर्निंग आवर विजनरी ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री नरेंद्र मोदी एड्रेस टास्क and he has set a tune for today's seven session he has already given at that time five points which includes the seven session the theme of the seven sessions he uttered that universalization of quality education digital university which includes skill development digital skilling ecosystem industry demand and industry linkage urban planning world class education in gift city evgc that is a then the digital future is it india's youth to be empowered he told them that he told them that in our education sector for our education sector starting from the primary education to higher education he told on the e portal virtual skilling lab, lab defense industry task force and the auto tinkering lab and ai ct ugc all these that to be they to be come forward that to come forward to prepare everything and in the primary education even the smart classrooms long distance education he told all this and the preparation of india there is a make in india and now if we consider the seven sessions just now we have listened from our moderators the first session was on just on digital university and our onil shastrabuddhi ji professor onil shastrabuddhi ji has elaborated it very nicely in this session the k rajaraman ji he has uh, uttered on affordable connectivity of bharat net for the digital university 
our higher education secretary sanjay murthy ji has highlighted the overall framework for the establishment of digital university dr shati piramal ji he has he gave she gave an insightful presentation on the topic and talked about the learning from the ground to create a digital university professor jagdesh kumar ji chairman ugc talked about improved regulatory framework for new online degrees he talked about ensuring high quality education through purposed reforms professor anil shastrabhuti ji he has nicely explained that it will increase our ger in school education as well as in higher education also and there is, he has also told on online ug degree that is already it has been started by iit madras and he has told about the hub and spoke model which has already been started and access to devices and robust data connectivity that part has also been addressed and the second theme was the digital teacher and the digital teacher there was so many panelists were there shrimati anita karwal ji ajay prakash shahasni ji professor ranjan bosh he has told very nicely and in the that virtual lab he has told virtual lab is a paradigm shift and he has also told yeah, the challenges and the creation of quality content and its solution also and he has also mentioned the bridge the gap between the deep skilling and the deep learnings he has also identified the industry partners and the skills which is very important and getting quality teachers national award winner teachers this is also very important you have also told the on on the connectivity of anganwadi workers anganwadi centers you have addressed the anganwadi centers also these are very important part but for all these things we should consider about the timelines and we should have connectivity with the all the stakeholders and we should if we fix the responsibility of communication between the stakeholders it will be beneficial i think so in the third group there is a widening reach of one class one channel reaching quality digital education in this case the professor nagesh rao ji in our budget we know that from 12 channels to we will go to we will want to develop 200 channels and for that professor nagesh rao who is the vc of ignu he also stated that expansion of the pm ebidda initiative will create a way to the learners at their doorsteps sri murali dhanan ji chairman tmi he mentioned the creation of employment through skilling a child at the school level this is also very important part dr t s joshi director gcert gujarat shared the journey of bande gujarat which comprises the success and the challenges of the program as well dd prashar bharati mib 200 tv channels you have already fixed up the responsibility whenever i am listening your lectures i thought that possibly there is no timeline but i am very happy that you have already given the timeline that 200 new dth tv channels will be launched by july 2022 thank you to this team at the same time here also communication to the stakeholders responsibility is to be fixed up who will communicate and how it will be coordinated indian sign language for the bangladeshi students that also has been addressed and it is 
already it has already been developed in our by ministry of education and the very important part you have addressed regarding the employment opportunities possibly uh, which can be told in all the seven sessions that is a um, media production technical staff and the academic staff so we can evaluate the how much how much amount of media production how much amount of technical staff how much amount of academic staff required if we can uh, if we can predict then that will be beneficial to the to make the institute which can produce this number of media production personals technical staffs and the academic staffs thank you mr behra and your team and the fourth theme is the india specific knowledge in urban planning and design professor dr p s n rao director school of planning and architecture sri manoj joshi secretary mo h u a you have also told you have also told there is a india specific law law is very nice india specific law and the drone technology and another very good points you have raised that is the integration of spa iit nit and other regulatory bodies i would like to add in your capacity building program there are workshop and everything will be there but at the same time a definitive integration up integrated approach should be there so that they should not fight whenever they will come in the town planning and five center of excellence you have proposed and there the research work will be more and in that uh, your session i would like to add if you consider about the indus valley civilization indus valley civilizations planning their sewerage system and everything another two thing whenever we will uh, plan a, we will create a design of a new town planning this is something that's construction of the road sewerage system and the uh, drainage system of the rain water and the rain water harvesting that should be taken into account at the same time the level of the houses and the local water bodies to be addressed but at the same time it is very important there should be research work on old cities how i we can develop the old cities and old cities habitants they should have they should have the taste of the habitants of the new city that's why how this can be changed how this can be addressed how their market places can be shifted this is a challenge i will tell regarding on that research work should be and the fifth is towards the stronger industry skill stronger industry skill linkage it is also very nicely you have addressed from the government sector private sector financial ease of skilling digital training access skilling courses and the stakeholder capacity building sector skill contains regulatory requirements and this at the same time linking ongoing initiatives this is existing initiatives ncvt tourism and drone again i am coming into that point that the integration of those bodies this is part is very important and we have to take care on that on the sixth theme is developing educational institution in gift there is a gujarat international finance tc city there is a described on procedural aspects this is also very important in the morning our prime minister has told that our youth they went to they usually go to the abroad and spend huge amount of money why we cannot bring the teacher from abroad we can bring the same scope in our country so you have addressed very nicely the procedural aspect 
authorization of the respective countries, IFSCA compliance, and the legal uh, aspects also. And you have also considered the timeline. I'm very happy that you have noted the timeline then that will be provided by the IFSCA and gift city. That means you are aware about the timeline because our Prime Minister never wants to waste a single day and as because that in this year budget has been announced 28 days before and for that all the brainstorming sessions are being going on and so that we can start our work on the day of 1st April. And the seventh theme is that is a strengthening industry skill linkage in AVGC, animation, visual effect, gaming, and comic sector. It is very important. And in this system, there is so much opportunity for employment. See, Apoibo Chandraji, Secretary of Information and Broadcasting, he said that AVG sector can provide immense employment opportunities to our youth. It is really so. The Indian talent can lead the way in this particular sector. See, Atul Tiwari Chi, additional secretary, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, he has also told that uh, on facilitating growth in AVGC by establishing demand-based skill education as per the dynamic need of the industry, this is very important. We should focus on that. And the uh, Ashish Kulkarni Ji, Ketan Jadav Ji, Everyone has told on the subject. My dear friends, it is very heartwarming to see that ministries across the government are undertaking this huge post-budget brainstorming exercise. Our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, words must act as a mantra to us. Budget is not just an account of statistics. Budget, if implemented properly, can bring great transformation even with limited resources. Dear friends, all of you have tried to pour light on achieving Atma Nirvarata through the Atma, um, through Amrit Mantra of digital education and dynamic skilling and many aspects related to through these discussions today. This exercise aims to develop a comprehensive strategy for implementing various budget announcements. For instance, I would like to highlight the importance of town planning in the present context. I have already uttered the Indus value civilization. In the present context, we can think of town planning from a dual perspective, creating new cities as we have developed in the form of gift city as well as revamping the old and existing cities. The latter requires more focus on the infrastructure needs and providing smooth facilities of transportation, sanitation, drainage system, water supply, electric city supply and market facilities without much hassle. Overall, the aim of town planning should be should be to provide ease to living and cater to the employment needs of people along with taking care of its existing population in a seamless manner. Coming back to the discussion, it is surely a terrific initiative to discuss with so many stakeholders and decentralize the process. On one hand, it allows for a stock taking of the ongoing reforms and developments in the sector, while on the other hand, it centralizes the best minds from varied stakeholders to deliver it on the best and most effective way forward. A practice like this is specially suitable for education and skill development sector. This is a sector that is undergoing rapid transformation, both as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic and a, as a result of reforms being implemented under the National Education Policy 2020. My dear friends, as our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has said, the budget will help a great deal in realizing the National Education Policy. We must aim for inclusive, sustainable, and transformative education. 
the idea is to be future ready adopt 21st century skills and develop critical thinking and problem solving attitude our students must be trained to respond pragmatically to real life situations and solve real life problems this will lead towards the creation of an atmosphere of innovation in this context i feel the discussions held by all sector experts have been very beneficial and valuable we have identified strength as well as challenges i will also tell that always our all possible uh, activities should be there is should be this access to all equity quality affordability and accountability and it should be inclusive in nature the most valuable shall be added to access with ease tribals disadvantages economically weaker sections geographically remote places all all areas should be covered and it should be sustainable development should be sustainable so that it should never be discriminated and it should be futuristic it should be applicable in a proper way and nation will grow progress nation which will there is an empowerment enrichment empathy everything we should have we have flagged priorities and areas requiring synergy between stakeholders all together we have together laid down the best possible action plan for the future i congratulate all the participants and experts on this effort and i can tell dear friends all of you have participated mind it our prime minister has told you are creating history you are writing history for the youth in the 2047 they will remember you that you have created history and you have right history your activities will be recognized in such a way namaskar thank you all bharat mata ki jai namaskar can i now request the secretary higher education uh, for his vote of thanks thank you vinay uh, first of all i would like to thank uh, honorable mos education dr kalki for having summarized the events of all the seventh session breakaway groups and also contextualizing their presentations with what the message of the honorable prime minister said in morning uh, i would also like to thank uh, shri rajiv chandrashekar ji for having shared his thoughts on digital skilling and more importantly mentioning the need to leverage the nep to create prosperity in the country i also thank all the moderators who had taken an extra effort to put this thing together in such a short time and give us a glimpse of all the discussions that happened i would also like to thank the chairpersons as well as the co-chairs for their leadership and for steering the discussions in their respective sessions to all the participants and the speakers for sharing their time as well as their knowledge to enrich the discussions that happened today uh i would also like to thank all the faculty institutions and all the participants who have joined in the sessions from 11 o'clock in the morning uh, for taking their time and being part of the deliberations that have happened i also would like to thank the honorable prime minister for having spared his time to share his thoughts with us early in the morning and setting the tone for the sessions ahead and i would uh, be a miss if it, i do not thank my colleagues in the ministry the joint secretary neeta prasad who has steered this from the background and putting this all together she and her team i would like to place the gratitude to her i once again i think the learnings that are coming out from today's session is that all of us are intertwined in what we do and i hope to work closer together with all of the ministries to ensure that this vision is realized thank you once and all everyone thank you